Two neighbors who share the same ancestry, a common history, speak nearly the same language, follow the same church, yet often seem to find themselves at odds with each other. Russia and Ukraine. Here's how these two nations have descended into an inevitably recurring conflict rooted in centuries-long disputes, threatening the prospect of peace and security in the region and the world alike. Both Russians and Ukrainians share the same ancestry dating back over a millennium. Specifically, Kiev, the current capital of Ukraine, is the historic home to the first Eastern Slavic state in history. And Russian is actually a Slavic term used to refer to Scandinavians with red hair who arrived as Vikings and conquered the indigenous Slavic tribes. It is on this conflict-ridden land that both Russians and Ukrainians built their national identities. As such, Kiev holds a colossal significance for both peoples. But it was not until the 18th century that Moscow-based Russian Tsars included Ukraine as part of their empire. Wary of the rise of Ukrainian nationalism by the 1840s, the Tsars prohibited the practice and teaching of the Ukrainian language in order to ensure political control and unity across a land referred to as Europe's breadbasket. If you open a map, you see the geographical importance of Ukraine, particularly for Russia, is unquestionable. By 1922, as the Tsars were dethroned, Russia became what is known as the Soviet Union, a totalitarian form of governance that included mass agricultural and industrial plants. In the 1930s, when Ukrainian farmers descended against the Soviet Union's collective push, they found themselves on the bitter end of the infamous Soviet leader Joseph Stalin's iron fist. Stalin, responsible for the death of millions, carried out what is referred to as Holodomor, a campaign of famine, mass killings, and the mass relocation of more than 10 million people. The Second World War from 1939 to 1945 deepened the schism between Russia and Ukraine further. Why? Well, many Ukrainians fought alongside the Nazis against their common enemy Russia. But by 1945, Russia emerged victorious, and Stalin didn't forgive or forget. So he carried out mass deportations of Ukrainians to Siberian work camps known as gulags. All in all, Ukraine lost a fifth of its population during the war. One gesture though that is perhaps a silver lining in the century of hostility and violence between Russia and Ukraine was one carried out by Nikita Khrushchev, the Soviet leader who was of Ukrainian descent actually gifted Crimea to Ukraine in 1954. Why? Well, some say as an apology to what Stalin did but the exact reason is still disputed and unknown by most. Fast forward to 1991, communist Russia crumbled after the West emerged victorious in the Cold War. As such, Ukraine declared its independence alongside numerous newly founded republics, breaking away from their communist nightmare. However, this was not the end of Russia as we know it. Still a superpower, political control and territorial interests persisted particularly in response to European and more widely Western influence embodied by NATO and the European Union. Russia and Ukraine were still at odds, particularly over the control of the Black Sea, hence the importance of this part here, Crimea. By 1997, Russia recognized Ukraine's borders, a matter made easier by the presence of a pro-Russian leader in Kiev, Leonid Kuchma. Kuchma's Russian bias didn't last long, as he was replaced by pro-Western candidate Viktor Yuchenko, who won elections in 2001 and again in 2004. However, an economic crisis, the gradual disintegration of the opposition and Russian-induced natural gas pressure led to protests and eventually Yushchenko's demise. In 2010, Viktor Yanukovych was elected to power, a pro-Russian candidate. In the same year, the Ukrainian parliament withdrew its candidacy from NATO and by 2013, its association agreement with the European Union. But this did not come without consequence. Tens of thousands of people dissatisfied with the nation's political direction flooded the streets in what was dubbed the Maidan Revolution, or Revolution of Dignity. 77 protesters were killed by security forces, and Yanukovych fled to his patrons in Russia. In March 2014, a month after these clashes, Russia moved swiftly and annexed Crimea triggering the biggest clash between the West and Russia since the Cold War. In April 2014, Russian paramilitary groups also took over Donetsk and Luhansk in a region known as Donbas in eastern Ukraine. As the Ukrainian military tried to retain its territorial integrity, 
Russian forces move beyond their border in what is a largely Russian populated area in eastern Ukraine. More deaths, displacements and media rows led to a ceasefire by February 2015. A frail one, but just enough for both sides to take a break. Back in Kiev, a pro-Western party headed by businessman Petro Poroshenko had won yet another set of elections. With parliamentary majority established, Ukraine re-signed an association agreement with the EU in 2017. Meanwhile, Russia, adamant in keeping its own control of Crimea, constructed a bridge between its mainland and Crimea. Today, Russia has recognized the Donetsk People's Republic and maintains a tight grip on Crimea. The schism, as you can see on the news every day, keeps getting deeper, with the possibility of a new world war and nuclear entanglements being openly discussed. Even faith is unable to bridge the gap, as even the Ukrainian church has broken away from the Russian Orthodox hierarchy. And despite the common ancestry, Ukraine remains a site of Russian and Western rivalry. So old wounds keep reopening and seem to be far from settled. 